Hello and welcome to Sample Size Calculation with R, Generalized Linear Mixed Models. I'm Dr. Williamson. The purpose of this module is to supplement an earlier sample size and R module. Here, we'll walk through generalized linear mixed models and how we can estimate sample size using such models. This module is brought to you by the Biostatistics, Epidemiology, and Research Design Corps at the University of North Dakota. We are part of DAKOTA, the DAKOTA Cancer Collaborative on Translational Activity. If you find this module useful for your research, please reference the DAKOTA project. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Many basic statistical tests like t-tests, ANOVA, or linear regression are useful for simple data with a response variable that's parametric or normally distributed. For more complex data, and data that do not have a normally distributed response variable, there are increasingly sophisticated tests using what I'm going to refer to as models. At level one, there are general linear models or LMs, which still require a normally distributed response variable and the predictors are fixed effects. We'll go over fixed versus random effects in a later slide, so don't worry about it for now. General linear models include single and multiple regression, so you've probably already seen such models before, just using a different name. At level two, there's a path split. You have the generalized linear model, or GLM, on one side that still only allows fixed effects but the response variable can be non-normal so logistic or poisson regression falls within this model type on the other path is the general linear mixed model or elmer which requires a normal response variable, but allows fixed and random effects. See where we're going here. Level three, the generalized linear mixed model is the combination of the two. You can have non-normal response variables and fixed or random effects. So generalized linear mixed models, because they are so broad, can fit many, many kinds of data sets. We'll use generalized linear mixed models for the examples in the second part of this module. Okay, let's touch base on the first feature of generalized linear mixed models, distributions. As I've said, many basic statistical tests are only valid with normal, also known as Gaussian, data. However, lots of data don't fit a normal distribution. So unless you want to use a non-parametric test, using a generalized linear mixed model or generalized linear model is more appropriate. Here, I've shown in front of you, is information on some common distributions. The main split is continuous, so these light blue ones, and discrete, these darker blue. We also see there's differences in range. Um, normal distributions are actually from negative infinity to infinity, where everything else is bounded at least on one end. And then here are the kind of more nuanced explanation of what's going on. So let's uh, walk through a couple examples. Uh, so the beta, it is a continuous, and it ranges from 0 to 1, which makes it great for percentages or, or proportion data. Um, logistic regression, you've probably heard that before, is uh, typically used uh, with a binomial distribution. Now, the Poisson distribution, um, it's discrete. Uh, it's often used for count data number of eggs, number of individuals, number of blood cells, whatever. Um, negative binomials also, you can see the same sort of range, um, also used 
a lot of times for count data, but um, it's better equipped for, for deserts with high variance. So that is distributions. Now we'll turn to the second feature of generalized linear mixed models, mixed effects. Generalized linear mixed models can include both fixed and random effects. But there are statistical differences that I've laid out here between the two, such as effect size being the same or difference between categories, categories are weighted or, or sources of error. But the easiest way to distinguish between the two is this. Fixed effects include all categories of interest, like all the state parks in a state, while random effects are a subset of all possible categories, like 10 state parks from all the state parks across the US. So, Fixed and random effects behave differently in models and different variables will um, be either fixed or random. Typically, fixed effects are effects we care about or random effects may, may be less things we care about and more um, factors that we want to control for. Review. Generalized linear mixed model is a combo of generalized linear model and a mixed model. So the response variables can be non-normal and effects can be fixed or random. So a broad range of availability. We will create models in R using the package LME4, and then we can get sample size using the package Simmer. So let's take a look at those two packages we'll be using for this purpose. Package LME4 provides functions to fit and analyze a variety of models, including a generalized linear mixed model. You can uh, get more details um, in the PDF below. The function within this package called Limmer, it fits a linear mixed effects model to data. So. Uh, to run this, you need to include a formula. So here, and then I have it kind of spelled out here, and then as well as a variety of optional settings. Uh, the formula looks like this, as we see here. Y is your response. These are our terms. The ones on the out by themselves, those are fixed effects, while the ones in the parentheses um, on the right side here, that is a random effect. Um, why this is here is essentially this random effect is grouped by this fixed effect. So uh, for example, we could have a linear mixed effects model, uh, reaction time models as a function of days with a subject as a random effect within days. And we can see here, there's all sorts of formulas. You can expand upon this simple, um, example to to um, have other sorts of scenarios such as um, these two vertical bars let you specify as uncorrelated random intercept and slope or you can have um, crossed crossed or nested random effects other sorts of things here um, so th these kind of formulas can be pretty confusing. I know when I first looked at them, I was overwhelmed. Uh, it will really help to see some examples later. And then here just some more um, uh, sim symbols that they use in, in the paper explaining this. So uh, Limmer uh, has four, four modules, the formula, objective function, optimization, output module, that feed into each other. You really don't know how much more than that to run the standard usage, uh, but but it is good to know what's going on underneath the hood or that there are things going on underneath the hood if you want to play around with more functionality later. Okay, next we have the function Glimmer, which fits a generalized linear mix model, very similar to Glimmer. 
Uh, the main difference is you also need to set a distribution family. So the, the default is Gaussian or normal, um, but they do have most standard model families along with their link functions, so binomial, gamma, uh, Poisson, uh, though you need to use um, a different function, glimmer.nb, to do specifically the negative binomial. Uh, another important thing here, uh, you can do this in Limmer too, but it's more, more relevant here, is you can set an offset. Um, so if, if it's not null, you don't need an offset, but if you do have one, it, it needs to be a vector, a uh, numeric vector of equal length for the number of cases. Uh, a lot of times like Poisson regressions will sometimes will use an offset. Um, and you can find more about all this uh, in the documentation. Okay, let's look at some example R code get, to get a feel for using Glimmer. So you'll uh, need to install package uh, LME4 and then also lattice for if you if you want to make this fancy plot here. So uh, we can take a look at a structure. Uh, this is a built-in data set with um, LME4. It's CBPP, which is contagious bovine pleuro pneumonia, which is a major, major cattle disease in Africa. So the variables, if we do the, the structure thing here, we see that there's herd, incidence, size, and period. Looks like incidence and size, they're numeric, herd and period are categorical factors. Uh, if we do this XY plot, we can kind of see the data more clearly. Uh, the Y axis here is incidence over size, so kind of rate of incidence. Uh, then uh, period is on the X axis, so one, two, three, and and then the actual um, herd is each box. So we have 15 different different herds. So we can uh, create um, these uh, glimmer models a couple of different ways. You can have the response as a matrix or the response as a vector of probabilities. See here that they, they look a little bit different. But then um, the parts on the right side of the equation are the same period set as a fixed effect while herd is a random effect. We set it as a binomial um, distribution and we see that this is this is this result uh, in, in R. They they have the same. They are, they are the same here. Okay. And here are just some more of those formula examples for glimmer. They they're pretty much the same as as um, Limmer. Hopefully, uh, those past slides give you a primer on Packard's LME4. So now you'll be able to build generalized linear mixed models. But to use them for sample size, we'll turn our attention to Packard's Simmer. This is how we'll be able to get sample size. Um, so Simmer uses um, simulation to calculate power for generalized linear mixed models and, and actually any simpler model. Uh, it uses any models fit from LME4, and it uh, compared to uh, taking a look at this here. I'm going to close here. You can see uh, of the different packages that can do this sort of thing. Only um, Simmer is able to do mixed effects models using simulation, non-normal variables, and then uh, a lot of multiple spe specifications. Okay. So there are three major functions within package simmer, do test, power sim, and power curve. Do tests applies a hypothesis test to a fitted model. It, it, its inputs are, so a fitted model object, which is called object here, and a test function. These test functions can be like fix, compare, f compare, r compare, random, etc. So for example, you can have a model like GL, GM1, general model one, you do a fixed uh, Z test on it, and then the variable name within here, just is whatever variable name like within the model that you, you wanna test. So that's, that's that. PowerSim estimates power by simulation. 
you'll need to enter a fitted model. So again, and you also need a test and then a, uh, a simulation object to simulate from. Uh, by default, um, the test, if, if you leave test blank or sim blank, uh, it'll, test will just be the first fixed effect. Uh, and then if you leave out sim, it'll just be default to the, whatever this fit model object is. Um, also, there's obviously a lot of other options you can do here, including something like uh, setting your own number of simulations. So uh, our example here, you have just a generic linear mixed effect model, y, it's a function of x, and then a um, some sort of group variable that's random, or yeah, random effect uh, from whatever our sim data data set. We can run this power sim on this this model, and then we can actually set the number of simulations. I think the default is 1000. So if you want to speed things up a little bit, you can do 10. Finally, power curve is a power sim essentially on a larger scale. It runs power sim over a range of sample sizes. Uh, the fit, test, and sim are the same as um, power test, or sorry, power sim. Well, there are uh, more options to do here. Uh, one, one is also the number of breaks. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so we might have an example here, our generic model from before. We can run power curve just by entering the model. See here. Um, and I think it defaults to like trying 10 different sample sizes um, within whatever the range is. Or you can actually set your own break. So maybe I just want to do four different sample sizes of four, six, eight, and 10. You can do that as well. And then after you've run that, these can often take a while, even several minutes. Uh, you can actually print things out, the results, and actually you can print a plot of them. It shows a nice uh, power, power curve. At last, all right, we're on the cusp of running through full examples. Before we cross over that cusp, here are the steps we want to keep in mind through each example. One, get and describe data. This includes understanding what the response variable is and its distribution, what the predictors are, uh, whether they're fixed or random, et cetera, et cetera. Two, create model with LME4. Um, and you want to confirm the model output to make sure the results are interpretable. That, that is, you're running the model you think you are. Uh, three, run model with simmer. And then uh, you'll be able to tweak and extend the model as needed. So there will often be several iterations at this step. And then four, run a power curve. This will give you sample size over a range of, sorry, power over a range of sample sizes. And you can use to finalize appropriate sample size for your model. And again, there might be several iterations. Uh, so, uh, I have this nice green thing here to summarize. One, get data. Two, create model. Three, run model. And four, power curve. On to the examples. So this is the format. I'll have an introduction page, an R code page, and a results page. We'll cover five examples. Boom, 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 boom. From basic Poisson, to environmental study. I strongly suggest, while working through this, copying and pasting the code that I have here into R and following along. Um, make sure you have uh, LME4 and Simmer installed and then called with the library function, like so.